Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. Today, we will be working through the Cape Chemistry Unit 2 Paper 2 from June 2017. We will be working through question 1b, which is a combustion analysis or a question which requires us to find the empirical and molecular formula of a compound. So the question reads that on analysis, one gram of compound A containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only provided 0 0.40 grams of carbon and 0 0.54 grams of oxygen. Compound A has a molecular mass of 60 and effervesces readily with calcium carbonate. Now we are asked to calculate the empirical formula of A and the molecular formula of A. Okay, so let's see all the information that we have and put that together in a form that would enable us to first find the empirical formula. So here's how we're going to approach this one. So if we look at the question at all the information that we've been given, right, then we see that we can see immediately that we have three elements that make up the compound. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's it. There's nothing else, right? So we can, we can start by writing that out. We're going to write C, that there's C in there, there's H, and there is O, right? From a mass perspective, we are given that the entire mass, right, of the compound was, it was one gram that was subjected to this combustion analysis. And so that means that we have one gram of the compound, right? That was subject to combustion analysis. And from that one gram, we got that there was 0 0.40 grams of the carbon present. And there was 0 0.54 grams of the oxygen present. And so by doing a little bit of mass, a little bit of subtraction, if we want to find what mass, right, of this one gram was in fact made up of hydrogen, then all we would do is one minus the 0 0.40 plus 0 0.54, right? And that would just be us subtracting 0 0.94 from one, which would yield a mass of 0 0.06, okay? So that's what the grams of hydrogen was. All right, so now that we've gotten this, let's give ourselves a little bit of space. Now that we've shown that process, how to get that, let's give ourselves a little bit of space here and just write 0 0.06 in that same row where we had the other masses, okay? So we have 0 0.06 grams. So that's what we're working with. These are the masses essentially of the elements that make up compound A, and they are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, once we have a mass, what's our, what's our next step? Our next step is to convert the mass to moles, right? That's our immediate next step, convert mass to moles, right? And so in order to do that, we're going to divide each element by its relative atomic mass. And so for carbon, that would be 12 gram per mole that we're dividing by. And that would give us a number of moles of, for carbon, that would be 0 0.0333. Moles, right? And for hydrogen, we're going to divide by the 0 0.06 by its relative atomic mass, which is one gram per mole. And that would give us some number of moles of da, 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 for hydrogen, that would just be 0 0.06 moles, right? And then for oxygen, now we're going to divide the given mass or the mass of oxygen that we have. We're going to divide that by the relative atomic mass of an oxygen atom, which is 16 gram per mole. 
Okay, and we're just going to cancel grams over here to same grams cancel grams and the moles comes up top. Same thing here. Okay, so we're left with the units of moles. And so for oxygen, then that number will be 0 0.033. Seven five moles. Okay. Now our next step is what? Our next step is to divide by the smallest of all of these, right? So divide by the smallest number of moles. We're going to divide everything through by that. And that is to get uh, the simplest whole number ratio, which is what our empirical formulas represent. Okay. So the smallest out of all of these numbers that we just calculated here in this first step is 0 0.0333 moles. So we're going to divide that by itself, right? Right? And when we do that, we're going to come up with a value of 1, representing how many carbons are there. And then similarly, for the hydrogen number of moles, we're going to divide it by the lowest, which we already established was the 0 0.0333 moles. When we do that, units cancel, and we get a value remaining of, what are we going to get for hydrogen? We're going to get roughly two, okay? We're going to get roughly two there, and so that means that there are two hydrogens present here. And finally, we need to divide the number of moles of oxygen that we had gotten by the smallest number. And when we do that, the units cancel, and we are left with roughly one, right? And so there we are. We know we now have the simplest whole number ratio of these atoms that are present in the compound, right? And so when we put it all together, what do we get? I'm going to come up here and write it. That our empirical formula then is going to be C1, right? H2O1. And generally, we don't write the ones, so we would just write that it is C. H2O, and that is our empirical formula. So let's just go ahead and box that, okay? All right, now we're being asked to calculate the molecular formula of A, right? So they've given us the molecular mass of A, which is a very crucial information that we need if we're going to be able to go from empirical formula to a molecular formula. So as usual, we're going to write out our general equation that relates the empirical formula to the molecular formula. And that is that the empirical formula times N is equal to the molecular formula. And N is going to be equal to the molecular mass or the molecular formula mass divided by the empirical formula mass, okay? And the molecular formula mass that they gave us was 60. So we can go ahead and put that 60 on top. And then we can calculate the empirical formula mass by simply summing, right, the relative atomic masses of the compounds in the proportions that they're present in the empirical formula. So we're going to look at carbon. There's only one of them. So we're going to put 12 for carbon down here. We're going to add that to the 2 times the relative atomic mass of a hydrogen atom, which is 1. And then we're going to add that to oxygen, which is 16. Okay? And so when we do that, we're going to come out with a value of 60 being divided by 12 plus 2, that's 14, and then 16, what is that? 30, okay. So our value of n then is going to be equal to 2, okay? And so now we are ready to plug in into our formula here. So the empirical formula that we got was CH2O, and now we're going to multiply it by our factor, which we got to be 2. And when we do that, all we're doing is multiply each atom 
that was present in the empirical formula by two so that we can get the actual number of atoms that are in compound A, which is what we call the molecular formula, right? And so let's do that in a stepwise way. If we multiply the two by the carbon, we're going to get C2 there. If we multiply the two by the two oxygen, two hydrogens that we had, then that will be H4. And if we multiply the two by the one oxygen that we had, then that will be O2. Okay? And so this then is our molecular formula of A. Right, and when we look at these two, the literally the only difference is that this one represents an actual number of atoms, and if we were to simplify it by two, so divide that by two, we would get one carbon. Divide this by two, we would get two hydrogens. Divide this by two, we would get one oxygen. So immediately, you know, you can clearly see that they are a factor. They are separated by a factor. That's the empirical formula and the molecular formula of a compound are separated by a factor n, which in this case was two. And so with that, that's really all that there was for us to do for one part B here, okay? So please give this video a thumbs up, um, comment and let us know down below if everything is crystal clear to you. And if not, let us know how we can further provide some clarification for you. And finally, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell so that you'll be the very first to know when we upload new content.